Thank you very much for this nice introduction. Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to, thanks. So today I'm going to talk about a project that I got recently funding for. I will tell you about the main idea of the project and we show you the proof of concept I developed to get this grant. So this recently funded project aims to develop an automatic information retrieval pipeline based on natural language processing and semantic web technologies to construct a knowledge graph from unstructured text in multiple languages. It explores how we can extract named entities and their relations from text to create knowledge graph fully representing the text content and their embedded references. This pipeline takes the text and the ontology, and an ontology, as its input and performs a chain of NLP and semantic web operations to construct the graph. It follows an ontology-driven extraction of the information, which means using the ontology, the algorithm identifies the information that must be extracted from the input text. Each pipe in this pipeline takes the output of the previous pipe as its input. The workflow has two stages. The first stage is for the initial construction of the graph. This stage contains three pipes. You see the first three ones. First one is the named entity recognition. So from the text, the named entities are recognized, basically just the entities that are required by the ontology. Then for these named entity, recognized named entities, uh, the second pipe retrieves information from Wikidata by sending Sparkle, uh, Sparkle queries to the Sparkle endpoint of Wikidata. And the third pipe creates the resources for the named entities, extracted named entities and the documents. The second stage attempts to enrich the constructed graph by extracting the relations between the entities recognized from the text. The second stage contains two pipes for the dependency parsing and pronoun resolution that you see at the end. The information retrieved from the Wikidata for named entities is used to unify the resources representing identical entities extracted from text in different languages. Thus, the constructed graph contains text in different languages that can be queried for the embedded references regardless of the language of the text. For citability reasons and faithful representation of the facts, the source document of each fa extracted fact represented in the graph is added to the edge of the graph as metadata information using RDF star technology. To ex explain the pipeline, I will use three sample texts in English, German, and Farsi to show you the workflow of making a knowledge graph from these three texts and making it queryable by references regardless of the language of the text. So here you see my three text, texts in three different languages that I will use to show you the, how the pipeline works. The same location and persons might appear in several texts in different languages. In these test texts that you can see here, that for example, the city of Geneva is mentioned in English text, in German text it is mentioned as Genf, and in the Persian text it is mentioned as Genev. A person's name might also have different spellings in different languages. As you can see here, Jakob Bernoulli appears in German English, and English text with different spellings. It is given as Jakob Bernoulli with C in the English text, and Jacob de, uh, Jakob de Este Bernoulli, Jacob first, here in the German one. So now we are, I'm going to talk about how these texts can be actually uh, kind of queried regardless of the language of the text. So why are we doing this? Imagine you're a researcher and you want to be able to query for texts that contain, for example, a name of a city like Geneva. You, if you do a full text search, like Lucene index space full text search, you will only get the texts that match that exact query phrase you have given. However, as a researcher, I might be interested to get all the text documents that have Geneva mentioned in it, no matter if it's Persian, German, or English. So the idea of a whole this pipeline is to create a graph that save all these three uh, documents with all the references given in them, but making them queryable so that the researcher would get 
all three documents with the Geneva mentioned. Now, so how we can do that? To, in order to be able, to, in order to do such queries, we need to replace the pure text representation of a named entity with a link to an RDF resource representing that entity, which contains all variations of the names of that entity given in different lang languages extracted from the texts. So, text is actually one of the inputs of the pipeline. Ontology is the second. So we need to make and define a very simple ontology, which contains the constructs or the types of the information, types of entities we want to be extracted from the texts. So for example, RDF classes defining the text document itself and the named entities must be added to the ontology. Each class for a named entity has properties that must be retrieved from Wikidata, such as the GND number for persons and geoname IDs for locations. There are other information also retrieved from the Wikidata, for example, the uh, gender, which I will later use for the pronoun resolution. The pipeline will use these identifiers, the geoname ID for locations and the GND for persons, to unify various representation of a named entity in different languages. Variations of the names themselves are added to the uh, resources. For example, here you see that the person has a property name, and the object of it can be a RDF literal, text literal with a language tag. And that's where we uh, store the, the names of the entities extracted from the text with the language of the text itself. Now, within the ontology, one can define the relations between the named entities as well. For example, we wish the pipeline to attempt extracting from text information like where a person traveled to or lived in. To attach the metadata about the source of the extracted information, we use RDF star, as I mentioned before. The property mentioned in, which you see here, has a triple as its RDFS domain and document class as its RDFS range. To verify the resulting graph, shackle shapes can be provided, for example, with, with, uh, which have the rules for validation of the information represented in the graph. For example, if I have retrieved the gender information from the Wikidata, I can check if it's female or male. The first pipe performs named entity recognition and the text using spacey or flare, depending on the language, provide, providing the pre-trained pre language model. It tags the named entities, persons and locations in the text and returns the entity's type and location with start and end characters. Next, the Wikidata information retrieved using the Wiki uh, information retrieval pipe processes the results of the uh, NER pipe that means the main properties specified within the ontology for each tag named entity are retrieved from Wikidata by sending requests to the Sparkle endpoint. For example, for a location, which you see here, the Geneva one, we extract the geoname ID and the Wikidata record IRI and store it in our graph. The geoname ID is then to use to, is used to unify the entities in different languages. In ambiguous cases, like for example, City of London, if we want, it, it, it is in the text, and we want to know if it's the London in England or London in Canada, and which records should be extracted from the Wikidata, the context of the text is used. So the other named entities are used to figure that out. The last pipe in the, this stage creates resources based on the ontology. A resource is created from an entity if no resource for it already exists in the database. If there is a resource existing, existing in the database, just the name, additional name in the new language is added. This process is repeated for all locations and persons found in the text. At the end, the input text is updated by replacing the named entities with standoff links to the resources in the graph. Lastly, the document is, is stored with rich text containing standoff links to the resources. Shackle shapes are used at this stage to verify the um, constructed graph before importing it to the triple store. Right, so we repeat this for all the uh, person, sorry, for all the persons and locations, entities, and create all the document resources. Here you see an excerpt of the resulting graph from the three documents to the first stage of the pipeline. References to entities are replaced in text with standoff links to the corresponding resources using their, their IRIs. 
And documents are stored with the enriched textual bodies. As you can see, the same references given in different text documents are connected to a single resource corresponding to that entity. After the graph is imported in the triple store, in this case we use GraphDB, which supports our div store, we can query it. In this query, then we can ask for all documents whose text has a reference to a location with the name Geneva. The query result, as you can see here, then contains all the documents in English, Persian, and German. Now, in the second stage of the pipeline, that it tries to enrich the constructed graph uh, using the relations between the entities, I use dependency parsing and pronoun resolution pipes. The dependency uh, parsing pipe extracts more information about the named entities and their relations from the text through dependency parsing, part of speech tagging, and morphological features that Spacey provides for tokens. The definitions of resource classes and predicates and their subjects and object class constraints defined within the ontology are considered as parsing rules. For example, the predicate lived in has the class person as its domain and the class location as its range. Then thus only relations are considered where the subject of the sentence is a person entity and the object is a location entity. The lemmatized form of the verbs are used. So the property names contain the verbs and the lemmatized forms are used. Last pipe attempts to resolve the pronouns in the text. You see a pronoun here. He traveled through to Lyon, Bordeaux, and he actually is Jacob Bernoulli, and we have to attempt to resolve that pronoun. Last point, attempts to resolve the pronouns in the text to extract more information from the text. The resources representing the named entities found in the text are put in a last in, first out stack for the backward resolution of the pronouns in the following sentence. If the subject or object of a sentence is a pronoun, the algorithm attempts to resolve it. Thus, to resolve pronoun, personal pronouns, the nouns in the closest vicinity of the pronoun and the gender information we retrieved from the Wikidata are used to resolve that pronoun. This approach prevents gender bias, that in gender bias which exists in the state of their art uh, co-reference resolution systems and does not cause perform performance trade-offs. Even though this is an efficient approach for anaphora resolution in English and German texts, other languages like Farsi contains zero pronouns, which are gender neutral pronouns, and so it could be harder to resolve those. So dealing with this issue would be the, uh, what I will do on my subsequent project. In this current one, I will focus only on the English and German. Right. The, these two last pipes are optional and can be turned off. For now, the current proof of concept is, as I said, for uh, these two last pipes only for English right now. <laughs> so here you see the result of the last two pipes, which extracts the information depicted from the English, in te from the English text. The knowledge graph is then updated. So these are the information we just extracted with these two pipes. The knowledge graph is then updated by adding edges representing these extracted relations between the named entities. The result of this stage two is also verified with shackle shapes before updating the graph on the triple store. If the pipeline user wishes to verify the output of this, mm, this stage before importing to the uh, triple store, that's possible. It's the uh, pipeline just outputs the uh, found relations. Now, for a faithful representation of the information, the source of the extracted information is then added to the edges of the graph, as you see here with the RDF star statement. The source document is added to the graph's edge through the mentioned in predicate. RDF star triple that you see here represents the sort of the triple which says Euler lived in Berlin, and this fact was mentioned in the document in Swiss. We can, so I could show you the visualization of how it looks, but I'm going to skip that for now. Through the Sparkle star, then one can query for documents containing a specific relation between the entities and their corresponding sources. So for example, here you see we ask where did Euler live in and where did this information come from? And the result shows that this information that Euler lived in Berlin uh, came from Swiss, uh, EN Swiss document, and Euler lived in St. Petersburg also came from the EN Swiss document. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.